Before I continue, I would like to ask you a question. Okay, before I continue, I would like to ask you a question. It's not a rhetorical question, so I want your answers. How does this song make you feel? Anyone? Happy? Yeah? I agree with you. It, oh, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet. Personally, it makes me feel really excited, like something big is going to happen. was able to listen to the song that I just played. You all come from different places and speak different languages, but even though the lyrics of the song, called Viva La Vida, are in English and some Spanish, you don't have to speak either of those languages to be able to understand the song and its mood. Music is, in itself, a universal language that emokes feelings and, and emotions through rhythms, beats, and dynamics. This is like any language you listen to. If someone is speaking Swahili or German or any language you don't understand, you can still decipher the emotions being expressed. Sadness is expressed in lower, minor tones and at a slow tempo. Happiness is quick tempo and has more major notes. Anger also tends to be minor, like sadness with shorter, faster tones. Well, the same thing goes for music. If I were to play something like this, I don't need to explain, the emotion it is spreading is more of a depressed feeling. Music makes us feel something. Whether it's joy or passion, anger or sadness, it evokes something inside us. And therefore, it is a way to express ourselves without words. Isn't that amazing? I could play something right here, right now, just like I did, based on how I feel, and communicate to you through that what I'm feeling. We can communicate our emotions through music without the extra words that we tend to slip in in conversations. Music is a language built on touching people emotionally, a language that we can all understand and use to express ourselves. When playing a piece of music, the brain's activities, the activity is increased. Messages passing through the corpus callosum, or the pink part and the brain picture here, these messages happen quicker and more effectively. This causes memory functions to improve by creating, storing, and retrieving memories more efficiently. It also adds different tags to the memories, like emotional or contextual. And this means adding more information, like when, where, with who, which is contextual, or how you felt, which is emotional. But music doesn't only help to improve memory, memory functions. It also evokes our memories from the past. An organization called Music and Memory actually uses music to help patients who suffer from memory diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. One patient, Henry, had been suffering from dementia for 10 years, and he rarely spoke to anyone or responded to attempts at social interactions. However, when his nursing home gave him an iPod with old songs he used to like, he was more social, could answer questions, and could remember times in his past when he would sing and dance and listen to that kind of music. Henry is one of the thousands of patients who music and memory has helped to reconnect with their family and their past. So when, we listen to me when we listen to music, we can improve the way our brains store, retrieve, and, and create memories, and also evoke memories from our past when we felt a certain way or listened to that kind of music, even if we suffer from brain memory disorders. Music can also improve stress levels, and in result, can actually make you healthier. When listening to music, the uh, heart and breathing rates lower as there is a sig significant decrease in the amount of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, being released in our bodies. Stress accounts for many diseases and illnesses, such as anxiety, insomnia, and quickened breathing and heart rates. 
So by listening to and or playing music, you can lower your stress levels. And by lowering your stress levels, you make yourself happier and healthier. One study done by the Harvard Health Department observed the effect of listening to music during an extremely stressful time, surgery. Half the test subjects listened to music before, during, and after the operation, and the other half listened to silence throughout it all. The results were astonishing. Both group stress levels increased just before the operation, in, a, in addition to a faster heart rate. However, the group without music's blood pressure remained relatively the same throughout the operation and decreased slightly afterwards as they were recovering. But the group with music's blood pressure decreased by an incredible amount both during and after the operation, which shows the effect music has on actually making your body relieve its stress. And that's only for listening to music. Playing it brings it to a whole nother level. Imagine having an extremely stress-fulfilled work or school day. Most of you don't have to imagine those days. You regularly experience them. And I do too. For example, last Monday I had two major exams, a big presentation, and a ton of homework. In addition to that, I had an after-school activity and a violin lesson, all in one day. I was extremely stressed, and as you would all know, it's never fun to be like that. However, as soon as I picked up my violin, it was a different story. I forgot about school, I forgot about homework, I forgot about everything that was stressing me out. It was, it was in a different world, one where it was only me and my music. I find it similar to exercise. If any of you have ever run before as an activity, you would know how you're only focused on running your feet pounding on the ground, your heart beating in your chest, and your lungs filling your body with air. Well, music makes you feel the same way. When you're playing a piece of music, you're only focused on the notes on the music sheet, your fingers on the fingerboard, and the sounds coming from the, the instrument in your hands. In those moments, nothing else matters. It's a pretty incredible thing when you think about it. So next time you have an extremely stressful day, pick up an instrument or listen to your favorite song. Finally, music develops small skills that we use in everyday life. To be able to play a piece of music, such as the song I played at the beginning, Viva La Vida, the brain has to first read and decode the notes on a music sheet to determine which they are, then send signals to the fingers or the arm or whatever you need to be able to play the note, and then it listens to see whether it sounds right. All of that happens in a fraction of a second. We zoom in on this part of the music. When I am playing my violin and I'm sight reading a piece of music, meaning I'm reading it for the first time, my brain, my eyes look at the note, my brain decodes which it is first. So in this case, the first note here is a B. My brain then sends signals to my fingers to place them correctly on the fingerboard to play the correct, to play the correct B. And then I play the note and see whether it sounds right. Or maybe I have to adjust my fingers a little bit. This immensely strengthens skills in quick reading to read the notes, hand-eye coordination to do what is needed to play the correct note, and listening skills to make sure it is correctly played. According to the Oxford Index, uh, sight reading music also improves memory even further than what I discussed by having to recognize patterns in pieces of music and problem solving skills when having to guess and improvise a new piece of music. We use hand-eye coordination when we write or when we participate in sports. For example, to shoot a basket. We read anything and everything we see. And we solve little to complex problems all the time. So music can benefit those little things we do all the time when are uh, really important in our day-to-day -day life. There are many other benefits to learning how to play music. For example, music is said to improve self-discipline, improve language learning, and make you more creative. However, perhaps the greatest benefits are the ones that I discussed. M expressing emotion, decreasing stress, memory, hand-eye coordination, and listening skills. Of course, I can't be telling you how great music is without making some with you. So we're gonna do a rain activity. It's gonna sound like rain. And I'm gonna divide you into three groups. You guys will be group one. Okay, you guys will be two, and you guys at the end will be three. Just choose a number, it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm gonna start an action with group number one, they're gonna start it, then group number two will join in, and group number three. And in the end, it's supposed to sound like right. And then when I move back to group one to start a, no new, a new action, group two and three keep doing what you're doing until you guys add into the, the, the activity, the same action. Okay, so group one, you're gonna start with the drizzle, rubbing your hands together. Okay, group two, you can join in. And group three. Good. Now only group one, go into the light rain, snapping your fingers. Good. Group two. And then group three. Okay, go on to the heavy rain. Only group one, go into the heavy, clapping your hands, heavy rain. Group two. And group three. 
Okay, and now we're gonna go on to the thunderstorm. So slap your thighs and bang your feet. You're one, you're two, and you're three. Keep going, keep going. And now we're gonna go backwards. So keep going, thunderstorm. So only if you're three, go back into the heavy rain. Tapping. You're two, and you're one. Okay, if you're three, go back to the light rain. Give two, you're one, back to the drizzle. You're three, you're two, you're one, and then I'll stop you guys one by one. You're three, you can stop. You're two, you can stop. And group one. I was really stressed to come up here and speak to you all, but after making a little bit of music, I feel loads better. Thank you. Thank you.